Who is the most frightening serial killer in your opinion? Part 4. Please help us grow by subscribing our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. The DC Snipers, John Allen Muhammad and John Lee Malvo. Not only were the killings completely random, people filling up with gas or walking in a parking lot, they started to move south, and I was still living in my hometown, Charlottesville, VA, so there was the fear they could make it that far south. Account 2. Robert Picton. Piece of shit killed poor street-involved native women, and police knew. Also called the Canadian with the pig farm? So many serial killers choose prostitutes as their victims because they know a dead Sally in the alley gets so little attention, particularly if they are POC, one of the reasons it's believed Wayne Williams was able to kill so many children in Atlanta. I remember reading one of the profilers of the Green River Killer got angry with a detective because he referred to one of the prostitute victims as NHI, no human involved. Sex workers may have their own problems, but no one deserves to die the way Picton killed them. Account 3. There was a super interesting Unsolved Mysteries episode years ago where they posed a theory that the Unabomber and the Zodiac Killer were the same person, Ted Kaczynski. Seems way too wild to be true, but there are some startling coincidences that are hard to ignore. Two separate true crime researchers, I don't think they were actual police investigators, who came up with the same theory completely independent of one another, and eventually met and compared notes to find a lot of information that lined up. Some things I remember from the episode for those who don't want to watch or don't have Hulu, so spoilers below if you plan on watching the episode. In late 1967, the 25-year-old Kaczynski moves from Michigan and begins teaching mathematics at the University of California, Berkeley. Less than one year later, in the summer of 1968, the Zodiac killings begin. One of the two Zodiac killer survivors mentions that he said he was on the run and escaped from a prison up near Lincoln, Montana. Or that's where the cops were after him from. I can't remember specifically. This puzzled investigators because that clearly wasn't true and was a pretty random and specific place to mention. Years later, Kaczynski is caught and arrested by the FBI at his small cabin in the wilderness in Lincoln, Montana. In one of his ciphers sent to the police, Zodiac claimed if it was decoded, it would reveal his identity. Eventually, it was almost completely decoded and was a long, strange diatribe about killing and how he enjoyed it. However, the final 21 characters have never been decoded. Investigators suspect this might be his signature. Could those 21 characters be Theodore John Kaczynski? The ages match up pretty well with how old Zodiac was assumed to be and how old Ted was at the time. There is also a striking resemblance between the police sketch of what Zodiac looked like and photographs of Ted at that time. In his last letters to the police, the Zodiac killer beings talking about bombs, something he had never done before. He draws detailed diagrams of them and talks about how he will start using them on his next victims. He then vanishes altogether. A short time later, the Unabomber begins his bombings. Both Zodiac and the Unabomber liked to write letters to the police and press and taunt them. They also both had a mutual interest in mathematics and symbols and ciphers. Things like that. Like I said, I don't know that I believe it, but it's definitely an interesting watch for people who like these types of true crime mystery conspiracies. I do sort of feel like that would have come out after Kaczynski was arrested. Surely he would have taken credit for it if it were him, right? It's also worth mentioning there was nothing in the Unabomber's cabin to suggest he was the Zodiac. Edit. Added all the details I could remember from that episode. I might be missing a few. I know it's super weird, but I love falling asleep to old episodes of Unsolved Mysteries, LOL. It was like 4 a.m. one night when this one started auto-playing and it woke me up and had me fully invested in the whole thing. Account 4. Mr. Cruel, Unsolved. He is an Australian serial rapist who abducted and sexually assaulted three girls and is the prime suspect of the abduction and murder of another young girl. After sexually assaulting his victims, he bathed them carefully to get rid of evidence. One victim described it as like a mother washing a baby. In one case, he took a second set of clothes from the girl's home to dress her before he let her go. This case makes me feel so uneasy. 
Account 5. I just finished Mind Hunter the other day, so this question is interesting. It would be the killer of the Atlanta kids. Yeah, they arrested Wayne Williams, but he might not kill all of them. The case was never solved. Terrifying. Account 6. Even Milot. That MF just came off as a good-intentioned Aussie bloke, giving a lift to a foreign hitchhikers, which then he literally brutally murdered in a forest. There's so much uninhabited land here in Australia. The population only takes up 5% of the total land. Freaks me the fuck out to think about all the dead bodies that were never found and never will be found. Account 7. I remember watching a documentary on Bundy, and they mentioned that he had the type of face that could look very different, depending on what kind of beard, a haircut he had, or how much weight he had gained, lost. They showed a collection of different pictures of him, and it was uncanny. The guy was like a chameleon. It blew my mind that they were all pictures of the same guy. Account 8. For what it's worth, Leonard Lake and Charles Ung are the serial killers who disturb me most. I find the addition of torture, mutilation, and violent rape to murder to be particularly disquieting. Leonard Lake committed suicide soon after his arrest. Charles Ung is serving life on death row in the Big Q, San Quentin. He has displayed no remorse. They also had videotapes of the enslaved woman rubbing them down and crying. They told the women if they didn't appease them, then they would kill their family, which they already did. Count 9. The Killers of James Bulger. They were both only kids who killed another little kid. The murder was so horrific the police hasn't said what happened in its full. A documentary I saw on it used the powerful phrase, rape is an understatement for what happened. And the thought of that happening to a four-year-old by two ten-year-olds is horrific. Even worse was in an interview was they said they killed him because he looked like Chucky. And after killing him, shoved batteries up his ass to see if he came back to life. Firstly, what kind of messed up parenting creates that? Secondly. F for the poor mothers. Thirdly, does this mean kids who have seen Chucky, God forbid, will kill any young kid with red hair? Account 10. Not a serial killer, but that Waukesha Slender Man stabbing always has really disturbed me. If you didn't know, two 12-year-old girls decided to take their same age friend out into the forest to sacrifice her to Slender Man. They stabbed her 19 times, and the little girl barely survived by crawling to a nearby road. Happened not too far from where I grew up, just terrifying. Account 11. Madame LaLaurie. Sick, twisted, and revolting. She was the one in New Orleans, a wealthy woman who was torturing and murdering slaves in the most sadistic ways. Agreed. And another who got away with her crimes, not only at the time, but that so few people now know about what she did. They should make a movie about her. Maybe change just the ending so she gets her just desserts in some cinematic and crowd-pleasing way. Account 12. Ted Bundy was my mom's study partner at law school. She was tipped off by a professor that he was being investigated. After he was arrested and escaped, they found her home address in his jail cell. I think she was saved because she lived at home in a big house with a big family instead of in the dorms. Obviously, it freaks me the heck out. Edit. The other crazy part to the story is after the professor told my mom stay away from Ted, she left the room crying and ran into my dad, who she knew a little. He saw she was upset and took her out to calm down. And that was their how I met your mother moment. So Ted Bundy could have prevented my existence. But in a way, he also caused my existence. Account 13. There's recently been a series in the UK on serial killer Dennis Des Nilsson. A Scottish killer who lived in London and prowled bars and streets for young men to entice back to his flat. He killed many people and was caught after a plumber found human bones and a mass of flesh in the drains. Turned out Des was dismembering his victims and trying to flush the remains. In his previous flat, he would burn and bury the remains, but his second flat was top floor of a three-story building, so resorted to flushing. The police found the remains of three men in bin bags in a wardrobe, as well as under a drawer in the bathroom, and a head in a large cooking pot on the stove. One killing which stood out for me was a young guy Des found outside his property one day who was unwell. He helped the guy get to the hospital for treatment. Days later, the young man went back to thank Des for saving his life, stayed for a drink, and Des drugged, strangled, and dismembered him. 
This reminded me of Jeffrey Dahmer and the lad who escaped his flat to the police, who then delivered him back to Dahmer's flat. People in the world astound me. There will never be peace whilst people like this exist. Account 14. I just recently learned about Nathaniel Barjona, easily the most disturbing criminal I've read about. Today's modern day, Albert Fish, Barjona's interest in crime began when he attempted to strangle another child when he was only seven years old. Eventually, the sickness in his mind devolved so far that he would impersonate police officers in order to abduct, sexually harass, or sometimes kill his child victims. He was caught and released by police multiple times and eventually deemed not a credible threat to society. He later moved across the country and began cannibalizing children. It is likely that he fed bits of children to his friends and neighbors during cookouts. Absolutely horrifying case. Account 15. I had a friend do some time in El Dorado Prison in Leavenworth, Kansas. He was a trustee and was assigned to clean the maximum security block that held Dennis Rader a.k.a. the BTK killer. He said that Raider would just stand at the cell window and stare at him. No words, no movement, just eyes wide open staring while he swept and mopped. Creepiest thing ever considered everything he did. Sometimes late at night I remember that story and get nervous.